Okay. All righty. Well, this is week one of Big Brother Heroes versus Villains. Um, and uh, yes, this is the, the weekly ratings where we go and we rank everyone left in the game from one to 10 based off of how they're positioned. Are they going to go home soon? Are they doing well, playing hard to whatever? We'll give all of our thoughts for you guys to hear, for us to hear, and it'll be super fun. Um, yeah, so just for reference, the veto meeting just happened. We know that Matt and Emma yes. are the final nominees, and the eviction will be tomorrow night, so we don't know who's evicted yet, per se, but um, yeah. Um, we should also point out, I guess, um, in the, the top right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see live notifications coming in. So I hope no one's saying anything too <laughs> offensive. <laughs> we'll see though. <laughs> um, yeah, it, <laughs> we're gonna get like a private text. Um, but we'll see it that'll be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Alrighty. Well, um, there is no super set order. Um, however, I figure we would start with the HOH and the nominees. So starting off um, with Luke. Steven, and your thoughts. Do you want to give like a rundown on how it's going to work? Like, oh, yes, yes. So Steven and I will each give a rating and then there will be an average rating. What the ratings mean. So a one to a two is like, you're a bad player. You're probably going home. You suck. And it's just bad. Um, a three or a four means like, you're in some trouble. It's not the end of the world yet, but like, not, not great. Um, maybe nominate it, maybe people are saying your name probably could be sought after soon. Five and six, you have some allies. Maybe some people are saying your names, but you've got a good group. Um, you're doing fine. People have reached out, maybe a pawn. Um, maybe you could be good, you could be bad, maybe a little unpredictable. Um, it's just a very average, like you're not quite great, but you're not quite bad. Um, seven and eight, pretty secure, playing the game well, lots of allies, lots of people have spoken highly, they trust you. Um, you're not necessarily like masterminding things, but like you're in a very good spot. And then nine ten is like, you are an untouchable running the game. Um, it's gonna be very hard to get a 10 score, but we'll see if it happens across the season. And are we allowed to give half ratings? Um, I would say no, but the average can be half. Okay, so I guess I'll start. <clears throat> yes, Luke. Luke. So obviously he's the sole HOH this week for the villains. Um, and he won the veto this week, which is um, kind of showing his competition prowess. I wouldn't say he was one of the biggest competition threats in season three, but I guess he, I don't know why he wanted to show that coming in to the season. I feel like if he wanted the nomination to stay the same, he would have had to win. So I guess that's why he didn't want to get any more blood on his hands to win the veto to make sure he didn't have to name a third nominee. Um, I'd say he's um, pretty well connected. He's made some definitely some new um, alliances from seasons that he was not a part of, um, which I think is interesting. But I don't know if winning the first HOH and veto was very strong for him. Um, I don't know. So that's why I think this week that I will give Luke a six. Do you want to put it in? <laughs> so Luke has um, a six. Oh, yeah, 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 I can put it in. I forgot that I have the power to do that, even though. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, it's so small, but that's okay. Um, yes, I am on a similar page as Steven. Um, I think Luke winning the first HOH for him was a very good thing because I think if he didn't win, um, he could have been an early target. In fact, Luke was actually my predicted first boot for the season. Um, that did not age well, but it's fine. Um, I, uh, I do think he is playing well, and I think his move this week is the right move. People are pushing him to backdoor Ross, but for him, like Luke's big thing is he just – the first stage of ways, you do not want to make enemies. So it's easy to say that you want to do it um, when you're not HOH. But, like, I think Luke is playing this well. Um, he does have lots of people that trust him. And no one 
has really said they're coming after Luke. Some people have said they, they don't really trust him, but I don't think he's the number one target for anyone right now, which is good. Um, yeah, the comp competition threat is a thing of that's not a great look. Um, but I think if people try like forget about it and he doesn't win too much more and try and dips back under the radar after this week i think he'll be in a pretty good spot so i am very similar to steven but i'm going to go one up and i'm going to give luke a seven for an average rating of seven and a half or six and a half (laughs) okay on to emma emma is definitely very interesting um because we in our, I think we said it in our video before, but in our video before we were like, Emma's going to have to like step it up this season to play with the big dogs. Like she won before, but if she wants to have a chance of doing it again, like she's really going to have to start like uh, making some moves. Um, And um, I think that I was very, very impressed that she came so close in the head of household competition. I, and then she, she said she didn't want it. So that's why she, Um, didn't win it Um, but I was surprised because I'm pretty sure in the season one overnight competitions she was one of the first people out she was Um, like on round two yeah exactly and so I was surprised that she um, wanted to come in and show herself which I thought was super interesting so that's when I started getting on the Emma train of like wow she really wants to be here Um, and I think she's in good with like she's a hero for a reason. Like she, she I, I think she wants to like say she's playing a little villainous, but like, she's really not like, I, I think, and I think everyone sees her as the hero that she is. Um, which I think is very interesting. Like, I think a lot of people here either knew Emma before, um, either from a, the season that she played or just from life, like seeing her connect with Kate was really interesting. Like I didn't even put those two in the same universe for some reason. Um, but I think her social game this season is a lot. I think, I think she just exists more this season than she did in season one, to be fair. And I think her social game is very, a lot more impressive than it was before. So I, we, I'm pretty sure we could talk about this. We are almost sure that Emma is going to stay over Matt this week. Pretty sure. And the other option was Emma versus Ellen. And even like that, we knew we thought she was going to stay. So the fact that she can be up against a lot of people, and like, for the most part, st- be safe, I think that's um, shows with signs of really good social game coming into the season. So I will give Emma a seven. Okay. A little too high for you. <laughs> um, I I will give my thoughts now. Um, I am definitely lower than a seven. I'm lower than a seven. Um, I agree with everything you said. Um, and I agree that her game is so much stronger this season. And I love it so much. Almost winning three comps now is very impressive. Um, and I think even still now, like the way people talk are like, oh yeah, and we'll, we'll have Emma on our side. I've talked to Emma and she's cool with me. Emma's cool with everyone. No one has it out for Emma. Um, the two things I worry about are one, I think because everyone's cool with Emma, she may turn into a pawn, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but may lead to an uphill battle to uh, maybe an eventual win. Um, I also think that right now, everyone has their core groups and Emma's like, oh, and we can get Emma, but that's only gonna get her so far. And I worry that, um, that she won't be able to break past that. So right now, I think she's in a fantastic spot. Um, I also, um, so yeah, so that's my thoughts on that. Um, I did have to deduct a point because right now there is a still chance. Well, that was not English. There is still a chance that she can go home tomorrow. She is on the block. People are considering flipping the vote. Um, Aaron is trying. Alex is trying a little bit. Dave is trying a little bit. Anthony Ventresk is trying a little bit. Um, I'm pretty sure at this point they're all just pretty sure it's not going to be able to happen but the fact that it's a conversation um is a little little frightening but i think on the whole it will probably be fine so for that i'm going to give emma a five and emma's average rating then becomes six 
Okay, moving on to Matt. On to Matt. Oh, Matt, there's a lot to talk about here. So I'm, I, I think it's fine to say that Matt was someone who said no coming into this season. Um, and we had, he didn't really want to play, to be honest, and we had to convince him a little bit. But I was, I was pleasantly surprised that once the season started, he, was, um, he jumped right in and he was um, ready to play. I do think that although he was, he, he was willing and ready to play, he did not really play right. Um, I think it was fine that he was um, nominated because it's like he was a pawn at first, to be fair, and that was some people's plans. Um, but he kind of had people approaching him early and he kind of gave them like eh, answers for like working together. But then once he was on the block and especially once when he was a final nominee, he was like, Hey, how about we like work together? Like you said. And I think it's, he was a little too little too late. And I think that, um, kind of sealed his fate. I don't think anybody besides Aaron actually is really pushing for him to stay and he needs nine out of 17 votes this week. And I just don't think that he's going to get them. And I think that's due to him not um, playing. He didn't really play at all to start. And I think that was his downfall. And I think, I think one of the causes was that was that he was out of the first round of the head of household competition. So he didn't really need to join any of those important FaceTime calls and like integrate himself as much. Um, so this week I will give Matt a three. Um, yeah, I feel very similarly. Um, it's so sad because if, if you guys have watched the draft, you know that Matt was the one person that I wanted nothing to do with on my team for the purpose of he was preaching. He really did not want to play the season. Didn't what wasn't going to put in a ton of work. And the thing is he's come in and like, he's playing, he's putting in the work Mm -hmm. and he is just going to go out first. It looks like, which sucks. Um, so like, it sucks now that, like, he is going to go after now wanting to try. Um, it would have been better had he still just been fine with going. That would have made it a lot <laughs> easier emotionally. Um, so I do give him kudos for playing. Um, but, yeah, I agree similarly. In the beginning, just not – some people reached out to him, um, like, wanting to work together. And he was like, I'll get back to you later, maybe. Um, and then the time came around where he needed them and people had already formed stronger bonds. People kind of see him as a wild card because he couldn't give a definitive answer. Um, and I think compared to Emma, people really are not totally incentivized to keep him. That being said, there are people that are considering it, do want it, and are testing the waters to see if it's possible. Um, I think it's very, very unlikely, but isn't totally out of the realm of possibilities so for those reasons i am also giving that a three for an average rating of three all right moving on now we have the other side of the hoh nominees that were dethroned and saved this week yeah. so steven so, take it away with ross oh a facetime call starting um oh, that's fun anyways um so ross is someone who in previous seasons i'm trying to make sure in my head like didn't do super well in the wall competition like correct me if i'm wrong he didn't do like that well like are, am i right he he did like average on both times yeah, he did, like, average. um and he's not someone who i would have pegged to want to win the first hoh competition so i was also very shocked with ross that he wanted to win the first hoh i think i have um, a theory of why Okay, well, you can say it in yours. But um, I think that he has overall, like, the same connections that he had um, in previous seasons. I'm trying to think of, like, many new people that he connected with. Um, I think a lot of people were definitely trying to come up to him for nominations, um, which I think that was, I guess, the plus side of being an HOH is that people come up to you and want to form those relationships with you. Um, He was... Well, I don't know if he was ever really in consideration, but people were pushing for him to be backdoored this week, and Luke decided obviously not to do it. Um, so I think that he definitely has to watch his back going forward, because um, I think people are definitely after him and also after Bella, 
I think pe- people are definitely after Bella too. Like, but I do think that once um, one of them goes, I think that the other one might be able to just sink into it. So it's going to be whatever one. It, I mean, we say this every season though. Like, <laughs> one of them will go and then <laughs> the other one sinks in, but it never happens. Like, they both <laughs> end up doing well. Like, I don't know how um, that happens, but. I, I don't know how much Ross does the season, like how far Ross gets the season. So I'm kind of nervous about that. But right now, like, um, like right now, I mean, he has those connections. He has his strong allies, but I, I do worry for him. So that's why I'm going to give him a five. Um, I will spoil my rating now. I'm also giving Ross a five. Um, there is a, a couple of reasons for that one I do on the topic of Ross wanting to win the first HOH. Um, I think now that he watches big brother, the show proper winning the first HOH is it's seen as this thing of like, Oh, you're gonna be a big threat. But like, it really allows you to have people come to you and start conversations with people. So I think that was very, very smart of him. Um, flip side, he didn't, talk much to people people came to him but he kept it very secret and then made a decision on his own i feel like what you want to do is to just kind of get an easy do what luke did of just like easy pawnee type targets that the house will agree upon make some allies tell them they're safe um and that's not exactly what happened in addition dan is gunning for him and bella kate is gunning for him and bella Juliana is gunning for Bella, not as much Ross. Um, pe- people are out for him and Bella specifically. And I think they want Bella out more. But with the heroes versus villains twist, Bella just has to win one comp and all of a sudden Ross is the target. Um, so while I don't necessarily think that he's in a horrible position, because he does have a lot of people that wouldn't touch, wouldn't touch him. But he also has a lot of people that would directly put him up. So... For those reasons, five, right in the middle. He's also a very smart player. I think he would see something coming and be able to work around it. Um, but because he's in kind of that precarious position where like half the house would totally keep him safe and half the house would straight up nominate him and his closest ally. So five. Yeah. Okay, Dan. Dan is someone that I was very excited to see play with all of these other people that he has not yet played with. I was expecting him to, <laughs> like, Matt is one of his closest friends. I was expecting him to, like, work with Matt and, like, be like be close with him in this game, but that is, like, exactly the opposite of what happened. Dan, from the beginning of the week, was always like, yeah, if Matt goes this week, like, whatever. Like, it's better than um, some other people. So, like, that was funny to me. Um, yeah, Dan is probably one of, the, one of my favorite players this season, entertainment-wise. Um, him and Kate and Juliana on FaceTime are always so funny to go on and watch. Um, he was nominated this week, but I think that even if he was, um, even if he did not win the Heroes versus Villain competition with Juliet, I think that he would have been fine, either winning the veto or he would have just been protected on all sides because he has so many connections. He has he has Kate and Juliana who would have branched out and reached out for him um, to everyone else. So I feel like he would have been fine this week. Um, and I do think he, and uh, I guess I guess I can roll uh, I can roll Julianne and Kate in with him with all this stuff. But um, I think they're really confident that they can influence people like Luke because they were gung ho for getting Ross out this week, and they were so confident that it was going to happen before the veto, and then they just weren't able to do it. And I think that they think that they have um, all this influence that they might not have all of it. Um, but I do think Dan is in a very good position. Um, that's why I will give Dan a seven. Alrighty. Um, I agree with a lot of that. I think Dan is a very, Dan is very confident. Um, and there is a very different 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 line between confident and cocky and we'll get to that a little later (laughs) but dan's confident in that he knows his allies he knows who he can manipulate but he also gets nervous and like thinks that 
so I like he thinks from all sides and I think that's really key um I do think of his main grouping he is seen as the pinpoint target um which I don't necessarily know if it I mean he is absolutely a huge threat a huge force to be reckoned with um I just don't know necessarily if he'll be able to influence as much as he thinks he can because him specifically him um oh god I'm just reading the notifications <laughs> um uh him Kate and Juliana are a type three um and he's talked to Alex a bunch and he's talked to Juliet a bunch um and these are all people that he has but like I don't think he can necessarily bid Luke to do exactly what he wants as proven by this week I don't think Grace is as manipulatable as they think she is she's like scarred from season three and is not gonna (laughs) let it happen again um I think I think just people are much more up on their guards with him and I think people would take a shot at him if given the chance I don't think it's quite at that point yet um I'm not as high as a seven but I will be giving Dan a six okay Juliet um is also someone that is interesting because I think she connects with people just enough, but I worry that we're not seeing enough of her. I feel like she's in the shadows a lot, which isn't necessarily bad for the first week. I mean, like, um, I'm trying to think. Like, Aaron and Caitlin, or not Aaron, but Caitlin's Blaine in season two was so, like, who is she? And then she made final two with one of the most dominant alliances in the game. So it's like, um, I guess I guess the first few weeks um, – as much as participation doesn't really matter. But, like, she showed up at the Heroes vs. Villains competition with Dan, and um, they had a few mistakes, but they ultimately won, which is um, impressive. And they took themselves off the block and made themselves safe for the week. Um, Juliet is another person that I didn't know she had that many connections with from people outside her seasons. And I feel like she's made even more coming in, which I think is smart already, that she, or strong already, that she has... Um, these connections that she can work with going into future weeks. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to rate Juliet. I think that I will give Juliet a five. All righty. Um, okay. So Juliet makes me a little bit nervous. Um, just because I agree, I don't think we've seen a ton from her. And what we have seen from her is a lot of, like, kind of agreeing with what Dan is saying or with what Alex is saying. Um, and she is she is talking with a lot of people, but I do worry that a lot of people also see her as an easy, an easy pawn or not super trustworthy. People have said she's a little sketchy, and people like Anthony Ventresca have already pointed out, like, oh, she's in with Alex and she's probably close with um, K-Pow and probably close with maybe Bella. Like, so I feel like people see her in the middle and if you don't have a connection with her, it is super easy just to nominate her. I don't think people are necessarily targeting her again, but I don't necessarily think, like I think in the next three weeks, she's on the block again at least once. Um, and granted, like with four nominations, like it is more likely, but I don't, I really do not think Juliet is out of the woods, especially with so many competitions to save yourself um, when a lot of these people are very strong at comps. So um, I'm, I'm torn here. Um, I think I will also I was going to go with a four but talking it out I don't think she's a target and I really don't think she'll go home so I am going to go with a five as well um cool. and I guess it's normal that everyone is starting closer to the middle like that's I feel like that's normal especially oh it's it's really unlikely for anyone I like I know I do not plan on giving out any ones and twos or nines and tens tonight like yeah. For the most part, uh, not even for the most part. I really don't plan on doing it. No one's playing that good of a game or that bad of a game at this point. 
Um, okay, so moving on to Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we talked about this in our first um, um, our, our draft picking, but Alex is someone who came out super strong in season one and kind of like folded back into the shadows in season two. Um, I think I just, a- I just kind of choose to forget that season two of Alex exists. <laughs> It's not, it didn't happen. Sorry, Maggie, if you're watching. <laughs> you kind of stole Alex. Um, um, but because I think like a long time ago, like closer to the summer or the beginning of the school year, we did not have Alex on our cast. Is that right? I feel like that was right at one point. He was not on our cast, but maybe I'm lying. Um, He was never not on the cast. Or he was, He I think he was like, exchangeable at one point he he was on the list of like if before season four started he was on the list of like if season four comes out with like these all-star players we can get rid of alex so he was season four then happened and season four is what it is um (laughs) but so that's why i was a little nervous with him coming into the season but then obviously he won um sequester which i was very impressed by it was very interesting so i thought that was going to put a target on him coming into the season but like it seems like it just hasn't. Like, I haven't seen Alex's name anywhere, and I feel like he's getting put into a lot and roped into a lot of conversations, um, which I think is very good for him and very interesting. Although he has mentioned recently that, like, he's going to have to start upsetting some people because he's in, he's tied in with so many people. Like, the whole Bella versus Aaron thing, which well, I guess we'll get to later, but <laughs> he's going to have to start, so choosing, funny. <laughs> start choosing, like, what to do soon and start upsetting some people. Um... Because I think he is in with the whole, like, James, Hayes, Maeve, um, Juliana crew. But I think he definitely has his connections from seasons one and two as well, as well as, like, other outside connections. Like, I'm trying to look at other people who he wasn't with before. But, um, like, he definitely has made other connections, which is very interesting. And I think, um, unlike some other people, his name, I don't, am I wrong? His name has never been thrown around, I don't think. This season so far, I mean, granted, this week didn't have that many. Um, I mean, the extent of him being thrown around is like, oh, Alex is close with Matt. Yeah, exactly. Um, so barely even being up for consideration for nomination and being in so many close alliances, I don't think he like is in danger anytime soon unless he like makes some is unless he does makes a very wrong move and like pisses off the wrong person. I don't think he's in any danger anytime soon, which is why. I think I am going to give Alex an eight. Okay. I'm going to start off my thing by saying this. Beginning of season three, I said after like day one, day two, day three, um, actually to Alex, I think. Um, there was a couple people there, but Alex was one of them, that Juliana – absolutely my winner pick she's in every alliance no one's saying her name and it's incredible i don't know how it's happened alex is in that exact spot and it's incredible because the key is he's some people are in a similar spot but it's because they've reached out and put themselves there everybody came into the season saying oh i like alex alex is trustworthy let's work with alex literally in one of bella's interview questions she said i want to work with alex i haven't worked with him before he seems cool um, I look at this list. Luke is with Alex. Emma's with Alex. Matt is with Alex. Ross is with Alex in the season one, two chat. Dan trusts Alex. Juliet is with Alex. Hayes is with Alex. Anthony Ventresca is. Bella. Um, Kate isn't directly, but is like on team Alex, like we need him. Um, David, not as much, but isn't going for Alex necessarily. Aaron's with Alex. Um, James is with Alex. Juliana's with Alex. K pals with Alex, Mavis with Alex. The only people that Alex really hasn't talked to are Reza, Grace, and Julia, I think. Um, and it's like, no offense to those three, but A, I don't necessarily know like next week what moves they'll make. I don't think any of them are trying to win the comps. Um, and I also think that like, even if they did have the opportunity to make a move, they're not going after Alex. Um, so it is still week one. I cannot and he's not masterminding anything. Um, but he is in an amazing position. 
Um, he is a – he's learned so much from season one. Season one, he was in a similar position and just got screwed out of it. Um, and I'm just hoping he doesn't get screwed out of it this time. I am also going with an eight, and I think he can make a deep run. And here's – I would love to see Alex Pilato win. I'm not jinxing it. I'm knocking on wood. But I think he would kill it. Um, okay. Anthony Hayes is very interesting because we were a little worried about him going into the season as maybe he wouldn't really fit in with these other big name players. Um, but he, since coming into the game and, and granted, unlike pretty much everyone else here, he doesn't know anyone outside of his season three crew. Plus like Alex Juliana Four. he's in season four, my bad. Plus Alex Juliana. I was thinking Juliana for some reason. I don't know. Um, so I think that coming into the season, he was very impressive. I th- I was definitely very impressed with him. Um, and compared to what I was expecting from him, um, in his DR, he is amazing. He texts all the time. He gives insights to his game all the time. And not to mention, like, I was reading a conversation that Emma was having with someone. She was like, yeah, I think I'm closest with like Anthony Hayes. And like, I was like, well, that's so surprising to me because a uh, USD freshman and a prep junior, like what the, like, how did they even, they don't even know each other. Like, that's insane to me. So the fact that they, um, or that he um, kind of made those connections was, and that, that's just one person, but like with more people too, I always see him reaching out and like making his mark. And again, he wasn't never, or I think he was worried about going on the block because no one really knew who he was. I was never really concerned for him because I didn't think that in a, in a, in all stars, anyone would throw someone on the block cause they didn't know them. So like, that was never my concern. I think some other people might've been saying, Oh yeah, he's an easy name to go up, but I was never really concerned for him. I think he was a little paranoid that he was going to go up and be backdoored. Um, but he was never in any real danger. And I think he's going from going from knowing no one um, to now stepping it up and his social game is very impressive. Um, I think I'm going to give Anthony Hayes a seven. All righty. Um, I agree with a lot of that. Anthony is impressing me a lot. Um, he really has, I, he one knows that like James and Maeve, he can trust but last season he put his eggs in those baskets and he's not doing that again. He is not, he's not letting James and Maeve run his game. Um, and I think that's one key. Um, two, he is actively reaching out and trying to meet people knowing that they all know each other and it's working. It's not coming across as like, I'm trying to scheme with everyone because he really is playing up like, hi, I'm Anthony. I went out really early in season four. I don't really know what I'm doing. I wasn't expecting to be asked back. How are you? And started like talking with like people personally. And then it's like, oh, have you heard anything with the video? And just kind of like continues the conversation slowly until you like, you feel like you have trust. Um, And I think that's really, really impressive. Um, The only thing that maybe worries me slightly is the fact that he is not necessarily in the social circles. So while I don't think he'll be targeted, I think he could be used as a pawn, um, depending on who wins HOH, because he hasn't reached out to everyone, everyone. Um, so that's the only thing that worries me. I am, uh, I'm not going with the seven, but I am going with the six. Um, I am very impressed. I think he can make a deep run. Um, I'm just hoping that he's able to like flip the switch at the end and like turn on these people that he's been talking to. Um, Cause if so, like, I think he's got a great recipe for success. He he definitely does have a very good social game. Like he knows how to talk to people, which is, it sounds so simple, but like a lot of people don't have that skill. A lot of people don't know how. They don't. Well, we won't mention anyone, but we're both thinking the same person. But anyway, um, we can move. (laughs) We can move on to Anthony Ventresca. Anthony Ventresca, he's going to kill me when he hears this. But Okay, good. I think he's similarly. (laughs) He has, in the first few weeks of both season one and two, I think that he was disappointing, <laughs> specifically season one. Um, it's so weird to hear now, but, like, 
in the first few weeks of season one, he was only seen as Rocco's cousin, which is so weird to think about. Which is really um, funny. <laughs> which is really funny. Um, I guess season two, he did have that, like, flip for Aaron. But I think that he was, like, I, I was kind of worried for him in the beginning of season two. And I think he's on, I think he's at a similar place right now. But knowing that he turned into such a great player in both season, I think that I have no doubt that he'll change his trajectory. Um, he's, I, I think he's a lot more paranoid than I remember him being, or either he is more paranoid than he was before. Um, cause like he's called me and asking me if he's being backdoored. I'm like, dude, I can't tell you. Like, what you? <laughs> he's like, um, texting. He's like, oh my God, I'm going home. I'm like, I'm like, you're not even on the block. Um, and I don't think unless Aaron won the veto and saved, um, one of the nominees. I don't think he was ever going up. I don't know if that's if I'm wrong with that, but um, um in forwards week. No, Bella oh, I meant, was sorry, I meant this this season. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. This right. week he wouldn't have because Luke, yeah, that's Luke was wasn't gonna nominate a villain. Yeah, well he was worried that if Aaron I don't I don't know. He was worried he was crazed. I was like I didn't say this to him, but I was like, dude, you're literally a villain and Luke is a villain and don't you have that agreement? But I was like, I didn't say that, but um so he's, and I feel like he's definitely backed into the shadows a lot more than I remember him being. But I think that's probably not bad for him since he's such a big name. Um, I think him and Aaron have definitely reconnected a lot, which is funny and interesting to see. Um, yeah. And I guess I can say this now, but Aaron was like, like, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny if Anthony left? And I'm like, wait, what? Like your closest ally from both seasons? Like, what the hell? Um, so yeah, I think he's he was definitely fine for this week. I think he could be fine for the upcoming weeks, but I worry for him at like the late pre-jury and like um going into the jury, which is like where he's finished before pretty much like the early jury to mid jury. Um so because I don't see him as integrated as um some of the other people, I will give him a six. Okay. Ross is sending all of these images, and I want to click to see what they are, but I will not. Um, yeah, I'm really con- Oh, they're Randall memes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Anthony Hayes. <laughs> oh um, okay, Anthony. Anthony, I am a little nervous for. Um, people n- have talked about that he has run season two, that he is a good player. Um, but... On top of that, he is not super well integrated. He really is not super well integrated. And people have said, like, oh, we're not connected with him. He needs to go, maybe. Um, so, like, I am a little nervous. I don't – even if he does make it far again into the game, um, I once again get nervous again at that same same exact point because he – season two, he did have that group and just kind of got screwed. But, like, season one – he was in a similar position where like he was in lots of groups, but he was like the bottom rung of each of those groups. And as soon as they like needed to cut a number, like he was kind of the first one to go. I don't right now. I really don't see anyone that, Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) That chat has not been talked to in months. How did that happen? How did that happen? Maggie Carr. (laughs) <laughs> like <summoner. laughs> I cannot deal with Alex and Maggie right now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Legends. Okay. Anyway. Um, I don't think that he's as well connected. I think that everyone picks someone else over him. And that's not a great spot to be in. I don't know if anyone really goes to bat for him. Because the person that would go to bat for him and Aaron. <laughs> it would be funny if he went home. <laughs> so, I don't really know what's up. Um, he he did start similarly in other seasons, which makes me go like, okay, maybe it's not as bad as it seems. Um, but it does worry me. People have already started to sort of mix his name around. Um, I think they'll target other people first, but like he's certainly not safe. I'm gonna go with a five for now. Making his rating five and a half. Yeah, my ratings are, like, consistently high, lower than yours, or higher than yours. No, yeah, yours are consistently higher. Um, maybe I'm just overconfident, some people. Or have um, some faith, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, well, I'm, I'm just trying to balance things out. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And just, I, you have your picks. You had your numbers already before. Right? I have my numbers predetermined. Yeah. I don't I don't have my numbers yet, so that's why I'm going first, and then Scott has his numbers already, so that's why he's going after. All right, moving on to Bella. Um, <sighs> Bella is someone else who we had to, like, convince to play. And then once she got here, like, she was back in Big Brother mode. Like, she was ready to play again. I have to say, I think my favorite Big Brother rivalry is Bella and Aaron, <laughs> just because they're so catty towards each other. And they're such good friends in real life, but it's so funny to see. It's so funny. Them against each other. Because Aaron, like, hardcore screwed Bella over, like, multiple. Twice. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> Both two- seasons. So I think that Bella is not playing the hat pretty good. <laughs> Yet Bella's the villain and the yeah. hero. You can talk about that. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, I mean, obviously, I think Bella's in um, a similar grouping as Ross. I feel like that's obvious. Um, whereas I feel like they're seen as like a unit um, where it's like, if we can't get one out, we might as well get the other one out. Um. So I think that if Ross is in danger, that means Bella's also in danger. She was the G Hanelia's hate club was 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 waiting until she dropped out of the HOH to all drop out of the HOH. Um, so I think they definitely wanted to see her go this week. I don't I don't know where why oh because Luke wasn't going to nominate a villain. That's why. That's why they changed to Ross. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think that she could be in danger. But again, like, you can never really, like, you can never really predict them being in danger. I feel like they always somehow pull something out of their hats, which is so interesting to see. And like Ross, they watched all Big Brother this summer, and they know, like, how the game works um, even more now, like, on a different level. So I think that um, she just has the ability to maneuver out of situations when she's in trouble. So I think that I... Um, I think I have to give her a five also. I feel like, because I feel like she could be very um, in trouble soon. There's so many people after okay. her. Um, okay. Bella may be the person that I'm most nervous for going into next week. Um, I think this week, Ross was certainly more prominently in the conversation of like, we need to back to a Ross, get out Ross, get out Ross. But that's because people thought that Bella wasn't an option for Luke, which neither of them were, to be fair. But um, but because people are so – Bella's the one name that people are, like, actively not afraid to say, we need to go for Bella. And looking at this list, like, Dan will do it. Um, I think Hayes would nominate Bella. I think Kate definitely would. I think – James is going after them. I think Juliana is going after them. I think Maeve would go after them. And I think it's slowly starting to spread as well. Um, And also, I don't think Bella is as well connected as she normally is at this point. Um, I feel like a lot of key people that she would have um, aren't talking to her as much for some reason. And maybe that's just because, oh my gosh, wait, that's so funny. Bella just uh, texted in her diary room episode cuts to people wanting me and Ross out, which is exactly what we're talking about yes, right now. People are already planning on going after me and Ross. It's like they can hear us. It's kind of it's scary. It's like they can hear us. <laughs> um, so, um, what was I saying? That's right. Um, <laughs> Bella. <laughs> um, people like Emma, I feel like she hasn't talked to a lot. People like Juliet is someone I feel like she could have. I feel like she really hasn't talk to k and Julia as much as she could be. Then again, k and Julia have kind of been invisible in these first couple of days. Um, so, like, there are a couple of people... She, she's really focused on talking to more people that she doesn't know, which I think is great, but you still need to talk to the people that you do know, because they're not just going to be sitting there waiting for you. Um, I think she is the most in danger going into next week, because people will hardcore push for her, so unless one of her core allies wins, I definitely see her heading the block. I'm going to – I think she's in more danger than Ross. So I am going to give her a four. Um, I've been consistently, like, one lower than you. <laughs> it's like a guessing game. What are you going to do? Um, okay. Eight. 
Oh, this is Kate is a situation. Moving on to Kate. <laughs> I Kate. we were just talking about this. We were like, we we're talking about the villains, and we were we were like, David and James are like villainous, yeah. But I think they just put it on for Big Brother, like, like that's just it's like a show. But like, Kate is like evil. Like, <laughs> Kate is the epitome of evil, and it's amazing. It's so it's so funny though, like. And I know, I know it's all just in the game. Like she would never do this outside of the game, but like in the game, she's e- she's evil. It's so funny. And I, I like really, you can see how much fun she has. It's like, oh, yeah, what if we did this? <laughs> and even yeah, like you said, like even Dan is like, turn it down a little bit, Kate. <laughs> um, there was one point where I thought she was gonna be like royally screwed this week, and that was in the oh, of- yes. This is something that needs to be talked about. She needs to learn like. She can talk some, say some stuff around some people, but she needs to learn how to like keep her mouth shut sometimes. Kate's mouth's gonna get her in trouble, and I think. It was when Jihan and Elias wanted Bella to drop. And they were talking about it together, like, yes, we need Bella to drop. Yes, fine, good. But then they called, I think I don't know, it's like two or three AM. They called everyone left in the they chat. They called everyone left in the game in the competition, including Emma, one of Bella's closest friends. And was if like, not yeah. best friend. Yeah. And they were like, they were like yeah, we, we need Bella to drop and then we'll go. And I was like, I didn't say this, like, obviously, but I was like, you can't say that. Like, <laughs> you can't. I, Emma's that. sitting there like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kate, stop. And then Emma was like, well, I could have gotten her, like, not to put you up. And I was like, ooh, like, this hurts, like, to watch. <laughs> like, um, so that, like, I had, like, a vision that, like, Emma was going to win and, like, put her up or something, or she was going to be, like, a final nominee this week. Like, that's, at that point on day, I guess it was day two, but it was the first day still. I if, thought would have been If Ross stayed HOH mm-hmm. and Dan and Juliet, some, if one of them won the veto or one of them was saved, I think Kate is a likely backdoor and first boot of this season. And I think she got very lucky that Dan got and, and um, that Luke is HOH. I think, yeah. yeah. But after that, I think she didn't make any more mistakes thank god like that was such a bad uh, I, w- I i cannot tell you how hard i cringed i had to go off of camera i cringed so hard um but i think since then like i have not seen maybe like the season two like julia's biggest mistake alliance i have not seen a tighter alliance than julia Ju- i mean sorry juliana kate and dan and i, th- I think they're the tightest alliance in the history of the the game yeah, I mean, and they've consistently used their season three chat since season three and just changed the emoji like going into the season, which I think is so funny. Um, but I think now that Kate hope, maybe Emma doesn't say anything to Bella or did she? I, I don't think she will. But. I don't think she will. Um, I think that she's probably fine, more fine moving forward. Um I'm so, I just love her so much. Like, I think she has to be my favorite person so far this season. Oh, she's amazing. Literally, everyone was like, why do you love Kate so much in season three? I was like, go back and watch season three. <laughs> got played the episode three times and got screwed over by Rocco Spadea, okay? <laughs> like, I, like, I, to this day, and, like, Juliana, I think, is one of the best players, one of the best winners. Mm-hmm. But, like, if the mercenary nomination twist did not exist, I think Kate really gives Juliana a run for her money. I hope she goes deep into the season. Um, so anyway, we kind of have to hurry up a little bit. It's been taking too long. But um, Kate, oh, God. Like, I think she's, like, so – I feel like, especially with Juliana and Dan, again, that alliance branches out to so many people that they can just, like, influence, maybe not as well as they think, but, like, they still can, and they can still save people. Um, I feel like – oh, my God, like – I gave Dan a seven, um, but like even though I think that Kate might be in more danger than Dan, I still want to give her a seven. I'm gonna give her a seven. Okay. Um, foreshadowing. I'm not giving Kate a seven. <laughs> no, no. Um, Kate, I think, is going to get herself in trouble. Um, <laughs> I again, I she is my favorite person on the season so far. Don't get me wrong. Um, but she is going to get herself in trouble. People know she's sneaky. People see that she's a little sneaky. And she is not afraid to hold any. Like, she, she's having fun doing it. But, like, she needs to bite her tongue just, like, a little bit. It's uh, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Um, and she's killing it. Um, but, like, same time, reiterating what uh, Steven said about the competition 
and her conversations with Emma um, and just like the way she goes about scheming and what like she thinks can happen. Like, I feel like she thinks she can manipulate Grace more than she can. I feel like she can thinks that a lot of people are more bendable than they really are. Um, and I think because she's more confident, the more she's like just doing this. So again, do I think she's in direct danger? Maybe. But like with the twist, it is a little unlikely. Um, I'm going to give her a five. Um, which makes Kate's average a six. Yeah. Okay. David, I'm so excited to talk about David. David. Um, well, first of all, I was, I was talking about this David before the season started on Friday. Um, and he was like, dude, I think I'm going to throw the first HOH competition. I, 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 I mean, I obviously, when I say, like I said, like I obviously didn't say this out loud, but I was like, um, like, yeah, duh, no fuck you should. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and then I was a little worried that when he was going to see that it was the wall, that he was not going to throw it. But I am very, very, very proud of him that he did. And not only that, I don't know if he actually fell asleep. I don't think he did because I was at his house and he chugged like three Red Bulls to stay awake. I don't think he fell asleep, but he did a very good job of not talking to anyone after he like fell asleep and like making that his excuse, which I think was very smart. And he was someone that I was like, there's, there's, there's no way that people don't target David, but like, like, what? <laughs> do, do people just forget about him? Like, it is beyond me. I don't know what's happened. What? Literally every sequester is like Jay produced to go. And all of a sudden it's like, he doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't know if people are just like scared to throw out his name. Um, I don't know why Ross was, I mean, I guess I can understand. I don't know why Ross was like chosen over him to like be thrown out. I think David is like super dangerous and he wins a lot more than Ross. I, but I know he told me that his main, one of his main goals is to downplay his competition wins this season and only win when he like absolutely has to, which I think is smart. And if he keeps going that route, I think he could continue this way. Um, I think this week, like he checked in with people when he needed to. He's played this week great. Yeah. I mean, this is a great week for him. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to give him a seven. Um, because I don't, I, I do not know how long it's lost. Because I feel like this was like an he had an okay start in season one, and then he like just completely did something out of the blue, which I don't think he'll do again. But like I, I don't know. I was- I think David has learned so much from season one, both from the first part when he went too crazy and reached out, and then from the second part where he had to comp win his way through it. He knows how to play this version of Big Brother now, um, and he definitely is here to win. David isn't someone that has reached out to a ton of people. And normally I say that that's a huge hindrance, but not in this case, because if he was doing it, he'd be on way more people's radars. People have flat out said, I'm actually not that scared of David. And I'm like, what are you doing? No, this is a mistake. mistake. You should be scared of David. Um, Because David knows exactly what he is doing. Everything he does is planned. He checks in with his close allies. He has branched out to a couple of other people who, like, he knows the map of this game. Um, People, I will say people have said that they don't want to let him get to the jury because they do expect him to turn it on. But, like, in the next coming three weeks, I don't know anyone that dares nominate him, at least initially. Maybe backdoored. But, like, for initial nominations with two chances to save himself, like, I don't think people are touching that with a 10-foot pole. Um, I think David has done very well. Um, And that's crazy. Because, again, if you saw our draft, he was, what, second to last to go? Yeah. Um, Last pick. Which is crazy. I He's doing incredible beyond all odds. Um, So, with that being said... I will also be giving David a seven. Oh, Miss Erin Donaher. Erin Donaher. <laughs> she scares me. I'm <laughs> so let's let's give a little. I, I think we I don't know how much we touched on this on our She's our... not like like when we say like we said like Bella scares me, Juliet scares me. But because like, oh, we think they could go home. No, like I'm frightened by Erin. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> So basically she was someone that was like, okay, I won. Like, I don't know if I want to come back. I don't know if I'll really be into it. But like, wait, I'm sorry. I have to go on a tangent. I was with her tonight. She was like, 
she was like, I'm so bored. Like, I don't do, I just sit around all day. I'm like, why were you considering not playing then? Like, what were you doing? And she still talks about like, yeah, I'll probably stick it out for like maybe a couple more weeks. And I'm like, what else do you have to do? Literally nothing. You have nothing. Um, so yeah, so she was somewhat, I think she was the la- last person here that we had to convince. Um, I'm sorry, the last person like in that we've talked about so far that we had to convince. First we had Matt, then Bella, then now Erin. And then I all I knew 100% that once the game started, she was going to snap back into Big Brother mode and she was going to turn it on. And she did not disappoint. She was saying, I'm just going to, like, be here. You know, I might, like, throw some people under the bus randomly. I might, like, call a house meeting, which I'm still not convinced. I like, still think it happened. I still think, that I still think that's a possibility. Um, but she's definitely, like, reaching out because she was like, oh, I don't want to make alliances again. Like, that's so, like, uh. And she's reached out to so many people, um, made new connections, um which is interesting um and now she's like really wants to get head of household and like do something crazy but i know like she will not tell us what it is and i'm very scared that she's gonna like do something great like obviously crazy but like um but yeah she was in serious contention to be i think if anyone except luke won the veto this week she would have been on the block and probably going home unless it was against matt which i think matt still would have gone home but um yeah i think she was in serious danger this week and i do not think she's out of the clear yet going into next week um so she definitely worries me um but like i don't see her as threatening this season yet like i don't think she had the people have a reason to send her home yet which i guess is the is um dangerous and that's how she plays um but yeah, she's even talking about like it would be funny if Anthony Ventresca went home. I'm so confused. Like she has me so. I'm con- very confused. Um, yeah. So, Aaron, let me see what other what I gave other people. Um, I think Aaron, I'm gonna have to give a five. I'll say five. Cool. Um, I will spell mine right now. I'm also giving Aaron a five. Um. Aaron's confusing. <laughs> I don't really know what's happening. Um, she is right now, again, like, she very easily could have gone home this week. Um, Dan did some work, and Aaron thought she did some work, and um, and uh, she managed to save herself. Um, and I don't, uh, people aren't targeting her by any means, but again, there are four nominees each week. Easy, easy target just to say, oh, okay, we need to nominate someone else, send out the winner. Um, and we, like, we almost saw that happen this week. Um, certainly not out of the clear. But that being said, I think she's very well integrated. She has a lot of people looking out for her. Um, and I think, like, as crazy as it sounds, like, if she was on the block, I think a lot of people leave over Aaron, which is pathetic. Um, yeah. So it's in a similar position. Like, right now, Erin is kind of, like, memeing her way through the season, even though she is, like, she she says she's just memeing it, but, like, I think because she sees that the game is more slowed down and that she doesn't have to put in 24-7 effort, that, like, oh, maybe I can just kind of play it. And I think, like, by the time she gets to jury, she'll be like, oh, if she's still there, that is. <laughs> but, like, oh, might as well stick around to the end. Like, um, so... But because I think it could go, like, it's a teeter-totter. It could go either way. Right in the middle, five is my, my score. Um, okay. Grace is someone else who hasn't really, like, showed up, I feel like. This next stretch of people, not all of them, but they're all very similar and all very interesting. Um, but I, I don't feel like... Um... That's necessarily, like I've said with like a lot of different people so far, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing for Grace. I mean, she's talked, like she's used her diary room like a few, like quite a few times. So she, we know what she's thinking. Um, I was very excited for her to come back after her season three exit. Um, but I don't know if she showed up enough that she's integrated in that many things. Um, I mean, I don't think she was ever really in consideration for the block this week. Um, she went out in like the middle of the pack for HOH, which I guess is like normal. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of excited to see what she does. Cause I don't think that like some other people, she doesn't have a tra- an upward trajectory, but I think she goes up 
from the next few weeks. I don't know if she starts next week, but I think she could definitely play it out because she saw that she won three competitions in the first few weeks of season three, and that did not, but that does not, that was not good for her. She, that was pretty much why she went home. She was seen as a strong threat. Um, so I think that, I mean, she's told us that she wants to keep her competition wins down low, at least for the start of the game, which is smart for her. And I think that she's trying to keep her head low because I think she thinks she came too str- in too strong to season three. But I don't know if she's connected well as the downside of that um, to that many people. So I will give... I will give Grace a five as well. Cool. Okay. Grace, um, and I'm going to say this about a lot of the people kind of going down the stretch here. Not all of them, but quite a few of them. Um, Grace is someone that I will say to her pro learned a lot from her season and is Mm -hmm. correcting those mistakes. But in turn, for a season like this, you need some people who made too many connections last time needed to take a back seat. She was not one of those people. I think Grace going into next week in a season with four nominations is super, yes, she was a comp threat, but not everyone was on her season. Not everyone has seen her season. A lot of people see her as a rando, haven't talked to, haven't talked to Grace yet. Um, especially from the villain side who are going to be looking to nominate heroes in the future. And now that Matt's gone, and I don't necessarily think people are going to be too keen on nominating Emma again, I'm looking down this list, and I think Grace is a likely pawn. Um, so my score is going to reflect that. I, do, I don't think Grace is in danger of going home, and I do think she has an upwards traje- uh, trajectory from here. Um, so this score isn't necessarily think, like, I think she's playing poorly. I just think that, like, she has room to go up and isn't in the best of positions right now. So I'm going to give Grace a four. James Bull. Holy crap. I don't know how. He was the other one. He was the one. I he had was the last pick. I left you with James. And he I was the last was, pick. I thought he was going to be like the easy first move. Like that's I thought he was going to be so clear. Um, so we, talk, we said this about James. We were like, and I think he realized this too. We were like, um, you know, James played with some um, non-A-plus people on his season. Um, And we were worried for him that he kind of like, yeah, he was really good in season four, but like he kind of had an easy route to the end with Maeve. He did have a very easy route. It was was pretty easy. So we were worried with him coming into the season with all of these big name people that he was going to try the same thing again. And it was just not going to get him anywhere because he he was just going to get outplayed. Um, and I think he said that too. He was like, or maybe this was Hayes. He was like, I miss like not being able to like, um, just like easily vote out people and like them not doing anything about it. And it's like, this is like the big, big leagues now, I guess. Um, and I think that he is very surprising. He thinks that he's running everything. He keeps saying that. Oh, he's very cocky. He's very Don't get cocky. me wrong. I'll get into my thoughts. But... The difference between cocky and confident. Um, I don't, I mean, I think he like knows what, like what the nominations were going to be, but I think half the, like over half the cast knew what the nominations were going to be. Um, so I don't think he's per se running the show, but he is definitely in a better position than I thought he was going to be in week one. Like that, this is insane. He, and he's even starting to like, I know him and Maeve were talking about distancing themselves, but like um, he was kind of starting to actually distance himself from Maeve, um, which I think is strong because he's, him and Emma, like... <laughs> He's gotten, I mean, I guess Emma doesn't really know him, but, like, he's gotten Emma on his side. This whole Winner's Alliance, I think, could be very strong. I love the Winner's Alliance. They're all, like, obviously they all won. They're all great players. Um, So I think, like, and Emma said, like, Anthony Hayes and James are my two strongest connections right now. I was like, like, I was like. I was like, what the hell? Um, So that is super interesting to me. (laughs) Emma said that? Emma's like, like James makes a move. Should have known I was a palm tree. Emma, that one. <laughs> Emma is like James is so nice. I'm like he's a villain for a reason. Like if you think he's nice, like he's probably putting on a, a mask. Um, but I don't think he was. He was never mentioned by Ross. I don't think to go up this week. Correct. Yes. Did no one mention James to go he up? Never, he was never like a 
I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm literally shocked. And he's integrated himself with all these new different people that he didn't know before. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm, I, I feel like I have to give James a seven, too. Like, I cannot, I'm just baffled. Um, okay, my turn. Um, what the heck is happening? James is one okay i will say this is the, the the line between confident and cocky james is definitely cocky i won't lie um and i think there's like a, a fine line that he's walking um and like right now he's like i feel like cocky in the sense of like haha i know what's going on but he's not necessarily like haha i know exactly what's going on and i made it happen like there there are two that's two different things um and he isn't in the I made it happen yet. And he hasn't been like greedily manipulating things yet. Um, and I say yet because I worry that that might be a trajectory. But it hasn't happened yet. Um, and right now, he he's someone that I thought in my mind reached out to everyone in season four. Therefore, should have taken a little bit of a backseat. But he's played this, I think, nearly flawlessly or as well as he could have been for a first week when he's coming in as this huge, huge target as the, the reigning winner with a duo, like, and everyone's just like, yeah, 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 I like James. James is actually gonna, Lily! <laughs> Anthony <laughs> Hayes and James Tees, I swear, people. Great. I didn't, I didn't. Um, Stephen just paused the recording because Lily started I'm, texting, I'm worried really that she's gonna say something. Like, I don't care. <laughs> um, we want it, Lily. Uh, wish she was here. Lily, if you're watching this, you're definitely not. <laughs> if you're my son. You son. Wait, sorry. Also, I'm looking at these notifications. Matt reaching out to all these people. That's so funny. It's so sad. It's so uh, sad. Watch us, literally watch us check back and like see that he's staying. It's like watching a dying puppy. It's kind of sad. I literally made the analogy. It's like, it's like a dog that you know you're going to have to put down when you want to keep it around for another day or two to like cut in the final memories. It's real. I, I feel so bad. Okay, anyway. um, anyways, um, James, I like, it's insane. Everyone, everyone, like what that, what the hell? Um, he, and like, to, and to his credit, he, he got himself there. People came into the season knowing that he was a threat. And in the beginning, when they reached out, they were like, okay, we'll keep him in our back pocket for now. But like, clearly we got to cut him. But like now on day three, people are like, huh, I think I actually like do trust him. And it's like, why on earth? Um, so like any credit that was taken away from James winning an easy season is being given back to him now. Um, I'm also giving James a seven. Yeah, with that um, text that Lily sent, she also sent a video, which I don't think I'm allowed to show. Oh, God. I saw um, the video. I'll watch it later. Okay. All right, Julia Flatley. Let me tell you, she was my first pick. And I'm not going to lie, she's disappointing me just a little bit. I have to say, that was a hot take. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I'm just, I don't doubt that she can go far. I'm confused because... She was, I was talking to her before, I, was, I mean, I talked to everyone before the season started, but she was so ready to play again. And I'm just so confused because, like, like where is she? I, I haven't seen her at all. I don't know where she is. Um, she is the one person that, like, I mean, you could say that about, um, like, Juliet, maybe Grace. Um, who else do we talk about? Um, I think that's, like, it so far. But, like, um i'm like where the heck is she like i don't even know what she's doing i don't see her talking to that many people even though she like she's pretty well connected with people already going into the season but like she's not talking to anyone i don't think um and i think that that was kind of similar in season two i don't think that that necessarily counts her out yet because she did turn into someone who was like who was an underdog and was winning competitions so I don't think she's necessarily out like out of it yet, like um, in the sense of like she's gonna be a floater and like just go just float to the end. But I am very disappointed so far, Julia. Oh my God, Julia, you're disappointing me. Um, That's so sad. <laughs> but I, I love you. But you're I, I you just need to step it up. Like I don't know. I don't know. So this week, I am going to give Julia a three. Ooh. A three. Mm -hmm. Um I I agree with the whole sentiment there. Um 
and my I'm gonna give her the same thing I gave Grace, which is a four. Um, but with like with that in mind, I think it's a similar thing of Julia right now is expendable to a lot of people. She has good relation. She has great relations with K Pow. <laughs> and like, I, end of list and like that's great um yeah like but like <laughs> going into it next week again matt's most likely not going to be here i don't think people want to nominate emma if two heroes are going to be going up and ross is a uh, back door i think she's right there and the, depending on who wins right there in the smack of um in, in danger of being nominated and grace is someone who has consistently done well in almost every competition she's ever played julia is good at competition but not as good as grace to the point where i can say that julia can easily win an each a heroes vs villain competition um on top of that her social game like last last time she had a solid group she doesn't have that this time um so I definitely worry. I do think she can go up and I don't think she'll necessarily be targeted to go home, but like she's not in a power position. She's playing from the bottom right now and I don't think she realizes it. Um, so that's where I worry a little bit for Julia. That's the thing. I don't think she realizes it. I don't think that she realizes she's not doing anything, which is scary because then you can't come back from that if you don't know. Um, but we shall see. Juliana. Um, Someone that I was, or not was, but like someone that going into the season, I was so excited to see come back. Like I was like, she was one of my most anticipated to see play again. Um, especially cause like we asked her to play again. She was like, Oh my God, I have to tell my mom. <laughs> I was like, that's so funny to me. Um, yeah. I think that she's obviously in good with Kate and Dan. I don't think there's anything there, but I think she all like, obviously she also has, um, James Maeve and Alex who she is not or and Hayes and who she's not gonna like um like outwardly go against but like she's been withholding information from them and giving it to Gigi Nelius instead like um so I think she definitely has the people has people that has I think she definitely has people but she has them in like tiers I think as I mean most people do um but I think she's gen generally in a good spot um no one was really like put up Juliana, I don't think. Um, again, you read most of the alliances, I read most of the DR, so like there's nothing I don't I I don't think that she No has, one said to put up Juliana now. I don't think she has any um one like after her. I look at this cast and I'm like like nobody she's in the season three alliance, she's in the LARPers, oh the LARPers group, um, and she's in GML Say Club, which I think they're three um of the biggest alliances um in the season right now. So I think she's pretty good. I think that I will give her um, a seven. I will give her a seven. Okay. Time for my opinions. I think Juliana is in the most powerful position out of anyone in the game currently. Um, highest praises to Juliana. Um, she's right. I have Alex as my number two, but Juliana right now, I think, is just one step ahead. In the group of her, Dan, and Kate, from season three and this season. Um, during season three, I think like maybe you can make an argument of like, oh, Dan is more intentionally strategic and was cut off. Oh, Kate was screwed by a twist. So like Juliana maybe like on par with them, but like she'd won. This season, she's proving why she's the best out of those three. And love Dan and I love Kate and I think they're hilarious, but Juliana I just think is a better player in that she, Dan and Kate, have so much fun with it but the problem is they have so much fun with it and then i think they get a little carried away juliana <laughs> right now has dan and kate she is telling them a lot with holding a little bit she has alex Maeve, and james and hayes uh telling them a lot with holding a little bit she has the secret alliance with ross which i really have a lot of faith in they are keeping each other safe um which is incredible i think that was such an amazing move i forget who reached out to the other one um, so I, like, I don't know if I can credit it. Juliana might've been Ross, but like whoever did it, kudos. It's a great alliance. It's working great. Please stick to it. Um, cause it's going to benefit both of them. They need it. Um, also Juliana has been preaching, like 
Dan and Kate have been on a war path of backdoor Ross. And Juliana's like, eh, it's not that great for Luke's game. It's not going to be that great. So maybe we just like shouldn't get rid of Ross. And they're not the least bit suspicious that Juliana is working with Ross. Um, she's also in with the k group. She is in with Emma. She's in with the winners. She's in with, um, with Reza, with the rest of season three, with Luke and Grace. Um, she is so interconnected with everyone and I think is an even better player than she was in season three and won that season. Um, I don't know if I'm hyping her up too much, but like I think incredible, incredible, incredible. I don't think she is any near danger, knock on wood. I'm rooting for you. You're on the team. Um, I'm giving Juliana an eight. Yeah, your first pick too. Um, no, Rezo was my first. Juliana was my second. Even though I thought I think Ju- I thought Juliana had a better chance, but I thought you'd take Rezo. So Juliana is my winner pick for all intents and purposes. Um, Again. Hey, pal. Um, Girl, where are you at? Uh, <laughs> Where is K-Pal? So sad. Like, again, I think that if you remember all the way back to the beginning of season one, like, she wasn't, like, a prominent figure, I don't think. She, she, she wasn't. I remember saying, like, oh, she has some upper promise. But, like, she wasn't, yeah. And especially when she was nominated against Ross by Matt, like, I was like, okay, like, you know, like, she wasn't really, I mean, I guess she really, um, when she won that veto competition, she really started, um, the stacking competition, she really started, um, oh, God. You know, like, that atrocity you know, of competition, you know, foreshadowing, never coming back. <laughs> that's Actually, a, that's a lie. I haven't talked to Stephen about it yet. <laughs> I have ideas. I, well, maybe we'll see stacking in the future. Who knows? Um, but I don't, I don't know. I think that, I think she's another one that's already well connected with a lot of people. So maybe she doesn't need to um, um, initially connect as much as someone like Grace might. Um, but yeah, I'm just confused. I haven't seen her either. I don't know what her deal is. Um, so we'll see with that. Um, I don't think, like, even though Ross and Caitlin have, like, a, like, a feud or whatever, like, they were never, like, Ross is never going to put her up. First time Ross hasn't nominated Caitlin at a nomination ceremony. Ross, as a head of household, has never. Improvement. Well, no, Ross, Ross put her up at the veto meeting in season two, but. Oh, okay, whatever. (laughs) But yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the first Ross HOH reign that he did not nominate Caitlyn at all. Um, I don't know. I don't know what my thoughts on her right now are. Because I don't see her in any danger anytime soon, but I also don't see her at all. So I worry. Oh my god. <laughs> like, it's the truth. Like, I hope she goes up from here, but like, I don't know where she is. Um, and like, I have to put aside her legacy for right now and like, just solely base it off of like this week, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I, I think she's doing a little more than Julia, which is why I will give her a four. Okay. Um, I'm in a similar space with Caitlin that I am with Julia, that I am with Grace. Um, she's not really doing much. Um, but with that being said, I do think she is in a better position as Grace and Julia because I think people see her as the bigger threat and would be more scared to nominate her. And I do think she is a little more well-connected, especially with that season one and two Vets group chat, which is putting her on good terms with some power players like Ross and Bella, like Alex, like Aaron. Um, she is also in good with, um, with the people like Julia and Grace who are good at comps and who knows, maybe could pull something out. Um, and also the the other side of the house, if we can call it that in Dan and Kate and Juliet and Juliana, they're not gonna they're not gonna nominate her there. They plan on working with her slash using her, which is we'll see. Um I hope she wises up to that. Um so again, not super active. I think she will go upwards in trajectory and I think she's in a slightly better position. So I am going to give Caitlin a five. Yeah, wait, I, I, I guess we never talked about this, like, um, hold on one second. I don't care. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, this is something we didn't mention before, is that, like, um, like, Kate and Caitlin are dating, so it's, like, 
I, I'm surprised that Kate is just leaving her out to dry. And especially she, Kate was on FaceTime with Jean Elias on oh my God, that was so the bad. wall competition. And she's like, okay, I have to go FaceTime Caitlin. Like I'm lying to her right now. Like that I'm like, that I'm like busy or whatever she said. Literally, and like, then, you weren't on the FaceTime call at the time. I think I was. I know what you're talking about. Oh, when Kate yeah. comes on the, the FaceTime with Dan and Juliana and is like, Hi, I'm on mute with Caitlin right now. Uh, so I'm gonna smile here. I like you can hear Caitlin like, who are you talking to? And it's like, like, like oh with Caitlin, like, eager, and it's like, what is like, I, I I was so excited to see them play together, but I mean of course Kate is here's the thing, I think they will play together, but I think Kate is pulling the string on Caitlin yeah. for as long as she can. Yeah. And Caitlin knows that like oh god, I don't know. I, it's too early to tell where that's going to go, but, like, th- that is a dynamic right there. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Oh, to- wait, to be very clear, nothing to do with in life. This is just Oh, game. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be very clear. They both yeah, made that very, very clear. <laughs> this has nothing to do with their... Yeah, we think. <laughs> we think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to our knowledge. <laughs> I'm not in their personal life. I don't know what's Okay, happening. we're going to move on now. Okay, move <laughs> Um... Um, yeah, Maeve Hegarty. So, I don't know. I, I think that she's someone who's kind of blending in. I wouldn't say she, I don't see her. I would say she's blending in. Um, in the sense that, like, I think she's doing stuff, but I just don't see her popping out anywhere. Um, I think she's a little too stuck to James right now, still. And she even said that. She was like, I'm, I'm so close to James right now, which is, like, my opposite intention coming into the season. Um, so I think that she has to, like, like, make some new best friends very quickly, (laughs) and, like, kind of, I wouldn't say cut James off and, like, snake him, but, like, he has other things going for him, so she has to get other things going for her, too. Um, and it is very, like, uh, I know she said this in her DR, I don't know if we're gonna include it yet, but, like, she was, um, like, I'm just this Marion Jr. who no one knows, and I'm, like, I'm in with all these, like, great people and I think she has to realize that she's like also really good too and she needs to like um take ownership of what she did in season four because she was one vote away from winning she could have been the winner so like I think that I think James and Maeve are on the I, they did the same thing in season four they yeah. I think they're on equal playing field and I think she needs to realize that and start taking ownership because she easily could have been the reigning champion right now um I I I have um, this is something I have more hope for her than I do for some of the other people that we just rated. So I think I have to go higher with her. Um, again, I don't see her on the block anytime soon. Um, I don't think anyone's really pointing out that she was in a duo with James. Like no one's really saying that, right? No one has really said. I mean, other than maybe like the first mm. few hours of the game. Yeah. Um, but like currently, no one has said like, oh yeah, and James and May- like Anthony Ventresca, for example, is going through like oh, Juliet is in with all these people. Oh, Alex is in with all these people. Has never once mentioned the fact that James and Maeve ran the game together. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, like, nobody knows. And the only person who really knows is Hayes, who isn't going to probably rat them out. Um, so, yes. One second again. Um, yeah, so, oh, shoot. So that's why, like, I don't know. I think I have to go higher with her than I did with Julia and Caitlin. I'm going to give Maeve... I'm going to give Maeve a... F- I would say 5.5, but I'll go 5. I'll round down to 5. Um, okay. Yes, Maeve, for me, is in a similar position to the Grace, Julia, Caitlin crew. Um, and I agree with everything you said about her and James. Her and James ran the game. And I feel like James has come into the season in the mindset of like, haha, time to run it again. And Maeve has come into the game with the mindset of like, okay, that was the B League. This is the A League. I need to ease myself into it. Um, and do I, do I think that Maeve needs to do the exact opposite of what she's doing? No. I think Maeve is doing fine. Um, she is, I think, certainly the most active out of Grace, Julia, and Caitlin. Um, And she has reached out to people and has had conversations with people, but none of them have really been about the game at all. It's all just been like, hey, I'm Maeve. How are you? Um, And like, that's great and all. Um, But then it's like, you need to do what Hayes is doing and then like forward that into like, what are your thoughts on the veto? 
do you trust me? I trust you. <laughs> like, you know, um, so, um, and also what you said about don't seeing Maeve going on the block, I disagree. I think that Maeve is in a similar situation as a Juliet or a Grace, whereas if a hero gets an HOH and is targeting Bella, but wants to backdoor her, I think Maeve is an easy, I don't know who Maeve is, pawn. Um, do I think that puts her in any danger? No, I don't think people have any incentive to get rid of Maeve at all. Um, especially because some of those connections are there and she is not really a huge threat. Um, so I think she's safe. Um, but again, like somewhere in the middle, I think she will pick it up eventually. Um, but I, like, I hope we get there. So I'm also going to give her a five. Okay. Uh. Okay, Rezo. We went, okay, we said Grace, Julia, Caitlin, and Maeve are invisible. They, they are in spotlights compared to this man. Where Reza has like emphasized the text. That has been Reza's contribution so far. Like I kind of forgot he was in this season. That's how. Yeah, I looked at his picture. I was like, oh damn. So sad. That makes me so sad. And part of it is that nineteen out of twenty of these people are home right now, and Reza is still at college. Reza is currently the only person still in college, and will be. I I don't. I be. He might become home for. Christmas. Oh, wait, no, I guess he just celebrate Christmas, so maybe he won't be. I don't know. So, we'll, like, I, we'll see. I don't even know. I think that has a huge factor in it. Um, oh, good. Anthony is updating his year. <laughs> Anthony, I suck at the game. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony Ventresca. <laughs> um, yeah, so Reza, like, I think that's having a factor in it, that he's not home and everyone else is, and maybe he can't focus as much. He was one of the last people standing in the HOH, too, which is, like, um, like, I was kind of pleased with, and then he just didn't, that was this big moment. He is someone that would have greatly benefited from a first HOH. Yes. Um, and I don't think that, I, again, I don't want to count anyone out yet. I think he could be someone who, like, all of a sudden shows up next week. I think he could, he's definitely that type of person. Mm -hmm. I think he was nominated the first three weeks of season um, three. And I think that might have helped him, to be honest. I think that if he wasn't nominated, he might have been in this similar position right now. Again, maybe it's not bad as being another runner-up who lost by one vote. Because he's he's a big name, too. Like, I, I don't think um, people say it that way, but I think he's also a big name. Um, so I think that... I think that he might benefit from taking a little... Um, a little uh, break in the shadows in the beginning of the season. But he's going to have to start, like making more bonds soon and I was it was so funny because I was um I was actually talking with Leah season three season one and three shout out about how like her and Reza are such great friends now but I don't see him making any new friends this season right now which is worrying to me um but I don't think that connection with Leah started until fairly jury it was it was Leah's first HO yeah. or second HOH it was Dance the Night Away um which, which was, might have been like second juror who yeah. did Leah send home? Did uh, Leah send home Grace? Yeah. No, Leah sent home Rocco. Because it was, she wanted to send Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It was first week of the jury. Um, yeah, so I think he's going to have to start setting things up. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess he could, he's someone who could also be a pawn. I feel like we've named so many people that could be pawns at this point. Um, but I don't see him being targeted anytime soon. There are definitely people who I see us being targeted soon. Um, hmm. So as much as he's like in like other people are in a spotlight compared to him, I do think he might be in a better position than some of those people. So I don't want to give him as low as a three. Hmm. For this week, you know what? For this week, I'll give him a three. I'll say three. But I, I expect I expect all these people who have low numbers right now to go up soon. I hope. I pray. Um, I'm not quite as low on Reza. I'm certainly low on Reza. Um, but in my mind, Reza started off very similarly in season three, where he was kind of sort of put in a few groups, a little mishmashy, was on Sweek in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But then, wasn't really totally into the game. And then once the numbers swindled down a little bit, oh, here I am, then they win some comps, and now I'm in a group, and now I'm in the final two, and I lose by a vote. Um, and maybe he'll win this time. 
Um, so I don't think he's in any danger. And I think like maybe he could be used as a pawn, but I think there are more pawn-like people. Um, and I think people, for some, Reza really has done nothing, but there are a lot of people that are like, oh yeah, no, don't worry, we have Reza. But it's like, you have done nothing to confirm that. <laughs> like, he, he is not, he is not said that you have him. Um, but yeah, like David and James and uh, Hayes and Juliana and Luke and Dan, and like, they're all people that are like, oh yeah, we have Reza. But it's like, yeah, maybe not. I'm like, I don't really know. Um, so I think people are incentivized to keep him which is a good spot for him. Um, but like, he really hasn't done anything to prove that spot. Um, he's very neutral for me right now. Um, right now I'm gonna put him as a five and I really see him teetering either way. He figure out him. Five, okay. Um, cool, well, with that being said, these are our ratings. So just for a quick little summary, I believe the person with the highest rating is Mr. Alex. Alex Giacomo, um, with runners up being David and James. No, Juliana. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Juliana, James, and David, who are all winners and runners up. Y'all, this is this is pathetic. The fact that y'all are letting these people do so well. Um, um, yeah. Lowest, I believe, is Matt, but that should kind of go without saying he's probably leaving. So sad for Matt. Um, also on the low end, I think, is Julia and then Reza. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I think Julia and Reza, they're not in any danger. Um, they're just, I think, doing, not doing a whole lot. Um, Cool. Well, this is where we sit. Um, yep, so today is day three. Tomorrow's day four, the first eviction. And um, for all we know, Emma's going to be walking out the door. But I think it'll be Matt. Like, this is what... I mean, I think we're not used to this um, because we the last season we had was season four where everything was so predictable. But like in season one and two, things flipped all the things time. Things very much. And like these people... Are like right now, like Aaron is working hard to see if a flip can happen, and I think yeah. like Alex is somewhat on board. Um, and maybe Especially these people and more time giving, yeah, them more time is key. Yeah, I think that I mean, I wouldn't count anybody out ever, is what I'm saying. Um, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so and for all we know, Alex could be at a two next week, and <laughs> Julia could be at a 10, so we never know. Anything can happen. Um, I think a lot will change, actually, between now and our next rankings. Anything can flip. Um, so, yes, we will see you all for day six of the game, I think, is what our next one is. Yeah, day six, I think. All right. Thanks for watching, I guess. I feel like a YouTuber. <laughs>